right, and welcome back to another episode of Raul's World of Sense. I am Raul. This time around, we're going to be looking at the Dofer A172, but kind of in a slightly different light. Um, in the last segment, if you were with us, we were kind of combining sub-audio and audio rate signals using the A172 maximum minimum selector. Um, this time, I thought it would be kind of interesting to kind of compare the signals that come out of this with the signals that come out of a ring mod, because when I was uh, kind of experimenting with it, some of the sounds I was getting out of it sounded very similar. Um, not identical, of course, because they are different type of modules, but um, definitely related, I think. Uh, so at any rate, we're just going to jump right in and start patching here. Um, we are going to patch sub-audio and audio rate signals together. So let me get kind of a basic just patch going here. I'm going to do a saw wave in my first input up here. And you can see that over at my oscilloscope. I'm going to take a sub-audio signal. So I'm going to take a sine wave over here. Go into input number two. And there you can kind of see what effect that's having on our signal at the oscilloscope. It's similar to what we saw um, in the last video as well. And incidentally, in case you're wondering, we are actually going out the max output at this moment. So just for reference. And let's see what else do I want to take. I'm going to actually take audio rate from this LFO over here. I'm going to put it in the high range. And I'm going to actually go from, let's see, let's do the reverse of that. So let's see, we have the saw over here. And I'm going to actually do the reverse saw. into the third one. There we go, kind of an interesting sound. Very different than what we had before. I'm going to actually bring down the frequency a little bit. Okay. So, now what I wanted to do is kind of put this in context. Um, normally, you might use this out straight to your mixer and just kind of use that uh, for your audio purposes, maybe a drone or you know, some kind of pad or something like that, some kind of background element in your uh, sound composition. Uh, but in other cases, you might actually want to modulate with this. So I'm going to actually take this out from our oscilloscope, and I want to take it into an oscillator. So over here on the left, we have our A110 standard VCO. We're going to pipe it into that and then actually modulate our VCO with that signal. Um, so let's get our VCO plugged in so we can hear what that sounds like. And I'm just going to try and keep it as simple as possible. I'm just going to use a sine wave. And you should be able to hear this here in a moment. There we go. I think I have my signal turned all the way down. There we go. So there we have a nice little sine wave. And now, if you remember what that uh, maximum signal looks like, let's look at it over there. Yeah, you can kind of see it at the oscilloscope, but it hasn't started affecting our VCO yet. Let's go in and just modulate with this. So I'm going to pipe it into the CV input. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Or zoom in, I guess, with the oscilloscope. So let me go into the, yeah, kind of this range right there. So hopefully we can see some more at least visually appealing results. And so this is actually the signal that is modulating our VCO. Zoom out just a little bit more. Yeah, I think that's good. interesting sound there. Now I'm going to adjust the frequency of my LFO. I'm going to actually bring it down a little bit. Maybe 
basically that should kind of create that kind of crescendo thing that's kind of happening right now, but just over a longer period of time. It might take a moment to start here. You can hear it kind of on the upward slope. Oscilloscope. So hopefully this will give you kind of an idea of, in context, another way that you could use this. I mean, we were kind of listening to it just straight from the max output um, and using it kind of more as a not really a combiner, but something similar to that where we were just kind of getting the signal that was coming out and then using it for whatever purposes we wanted to for audio. But in some cases, you might want to use this as a modulation signal, the stuff coming out from max out. Okay, we've done a good bit of the max out. Let's go ahead and unpatch that and then go into min out. Kind of hear what that sounds like. Make sure my signal's plugged in all the way right there. There we go. Might take a moment to build up. So we're coming at it from the other side. And you can see our waveform is definitely different there. Definitely a deeper, darker timbre as well than what we had before. Not a big fan of that one in particular, but at any rate, you get the idea. We've kind of come at it from uh, both angles right there. And let's see, I don't think I want to wait until it comes back again, but let's bring up the frequency and kind of try it up in a higher rate. Because this is overall just a very dark tone right there. And I could go in and kind of adjust it until I get something that's a little more to my liking but it might take actually a little bit more tweaking than I want to do. So, let's kind of stop this, patch some of these guys. There we go. And let's go ahead and now sort of compare what we just heard to a little bit of ring mod. And actually, let's take a look at it too. So I'm going to pipe into the XY out of our ring mod, kind of hanging out there in the center. And uh, let's see, let me get my sine wave out. There we go. And I'll unpatch that. Because we have to get some waveforms in there that we can process. And now let's go and make sure everything's plugged in the way it should be. Go down into my VCA. There we go. Okay. Ready to patch. Let's go down to saw wave and take a saw wave in to our ring mod. There we go. And now let's take a different waveform over here. Uh, let's do a sine wave into the YN of our ring mod. And let's take a look at our oscilloscope. I have a fairly interesting waveform over there. I'm just adjusting here the octaves so we can see what kind of variety we get out of that. I'm going to take this up one more octave. One more in the A111, so just look at the oscilloscope. So not entirely um, a mirror image of what we had in the maximum minimum selector but as far as combinations of harmonics um, alternate timbres um, definitely I would say in that same kind of neighborhood and for the most part 
Um, if you want to look at it this way, because uh, this is how I'm looking at it, um, this module, for the most part, is to process other signals. Now, you are sort of limited in this one to audio rate only, so it can pipe a sub-audio signal in there, at least not and uh, achieve any kind of interesting results. Um, but I could use it for audio rate. So, At any rate, I just wanted to kind of bring that up and kind of bring back um, the, the past, so to speak, because uh, quite a while ago we did a video on the A114, uh, the ring mod, uh, but at that time I did not have an oscilloscope, so we weren't really looking at those types of things. Um, I just was kind of curious as to what it looked like. Let's try a different waveform, and uh, then we'll kind of wrap up this this segment here before we go on to our next one. So let me just try a pulse wave. So this is a pulse and a saw in our ring mod. Let's do a pulse and a triangle. There we go. So there you have it, ring mod compared to the effects that are actually coming out of our Max Min. So definitely will give you some interesting waveforms output um, that you can use in all kinds of different situations. Um, in the next video segment, what I wanted to take a look at is how you can actually uh, fine tune the results that you get with the A172. Uh, so please stay tuned for that. Thank you very much for watching this one, and uh, keep on patching out there.